Hi guys, in this video we're going to use Microsoft Excel to do some linear programming. So, over here in these bubbles, I have indicated our three parts to our linear programming model. First part is the objective function, and that's right here. So our objective function is the unit profit for these two type of vehicles here. So, in other words, for each family thrill seeker that we produce, we make $3,600. And for each classy cruiser that we produce, we make $5,400. And naturally, this is a maximization problem. In other words, we want to maximize our profit. And so, it's going to, the objective fun function is going to be the number of family seekers that we produce times the profit from each family seeker plus the number of classy cruisers we produce times the profit from each unit of a classy cruiser. When we add those together we get this total profit which I've already put the formulas in for. I've already ran this model so this is this is the optimal solution. <clears throat> The number of units now are actually down here, and this is uh, what we want to find out. This is what we would not know before we ran the solver package and ran the linear programming and got these are the number of units of family uh, thrill seeker that we should pr produce and the number of units of classic cruiser that we should produce. So if we multiply these, the number of units by the profit from each unit and then plus the number of classy cruisers times the profit from each classy cruiser we get this guy over here okay and like I said I've already ran this that's why we have numbers here and here but naturally these are going to be start out with zero okay the next thing is the constraints as always we have constraints so let's just go through our constraints Basically, these two type of vehicles have used the same kind of doors. The family thrill seeker uses four doors and the classic cruiser uses two doors. And we have to produce less uh, than, we, we only have 20,000 doors, in other words. So we have to make sure we don't, we cannot produce more than uh, 20,000 doors. So that's one of our constraints. And as you can see, we have this less than or equal to. And these are actually going to be figured out by solver when it runs the linear programming simplex method. Next, labor. Naturally, we have a labor constraint. Each family thrill seeker takes six hours of labor, and each classic cruiser takes 10 and a half hours. And we have a maximum of 48,000 hours of labor available. So, again we have to make sure that our constraint is met in other words we cannot go over 48,000 hours okay so we've calculated that here so six hours times each times the number of units of family cruiser plus ten and a half hours times the number of units of cl classy cruiser has to be less than or equal to this guy Okay. And finally, demand. Somehow we got some information in this problem that we have demand for 3,500 um, classy cruisers. So, and no more. So, a maximum of 3,500 classy cruisers should be produced. Okay. And then here we have some additional items: slack and surplus in our constraints. In other words, if we don't utilize our doors or our labor or our demand completely, then we'll have surplus and if and or slack. Okay? And if we go over, we'll have slack. These are kind of side notes. We'll go through those in another video. But for here, I just want to show you how I set this up. So, I just write the profit here. This is just typed in and to get the uh maximize profit I could use the sum product function. 
Now what the sum product does is you can highlight two regions separated by a comma and what it does is it matches up the uh, first array with the second array and takes the sum product. So in other words what this is doing is it's multiplying this multiplying it by this and that's in the se that's the first and second and it's multiplying this by this. So sum product is a quicker way of instead of typing out this times this plus this times this, especially if you have many uh, numbers that you want to perform that operation on. Okay, and the same thing goes for the constraints. So as you can see, that's just the sum product of the number of doors that each unit takes times the respective number of units of that particular car that we're making. And the same thing for the labor hours it lines up with number of units. Everything is connected to the number of units we make. Okay? So, how to run this? Well, first of all, let's get rid of what I already have done. Put zeros in the places. So you see, all this stuff has zeroed out. We don't know what profit is going to be. We want to maximize it. We don't know what the constraint, what each uh, left hand side of each constraint is going to be. All we know is we have to have them less than these constraints. Okay, and all we also know is that the profit from each unit of the two type of vehicles. So now we can go to over to the data tab and go over to solver. It's an add-in and if you don't have it you can watch my video on how to uh, install add-ins. It's already built in to your Excel. You just have to go through the menu system to add this. So we click Solver and we get this menu. First thing you want to set is the target cell. Our target cell here is cell E11. That is the profit. That's what we want to maximize. So the next thing naturally you do is you select equal to and you select maximize. You leave this value as zero. Second thing you want to do, actually the third thing you want to do, the cells that will be changing. And these are going to be the number of units that we're going to produce. That's basically the deciding factor. How many units of each type of vehicle are we going to produce? That's what we want Solver to figure out for us to maximize our profit while satisfying our constraints and not going over. And finally, the constraints. And to do this, you click Add. And you can, in one swoop, if they're all left than or equal to, you can highlight an entire this entire uh, array. And then go over to the constraint side and highlight the constraints that you've put in. And click Add. Here I'm just going to hit cancel because I've already done that. So I've highlighted E6 to E8, less than or equal to G6 to G8. And if you had different types of constraints where the inequalities went greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, equal to, then you just have to would you would just have to do those individually by adding them one at a time. Okay? <clears throat> And once all that is done, you can simply hit solve. And solver tells you that it's achieved a result. And all constraints and optimality conditions were satisfied. Sometimes your constraints might not be able to be satisfied. And you can just say to keep the results that, they, that solver has gotten for you or to restore, restore to the original values, which were the zeros. Okay, of course we want these uh, the results. There's also additional reports that you can request that give you more detailed results on how Solver figured all this stuff out for you. And that's not a bad thing once you get a little deeper in this, but for the sake of this video, this is just an introduction to on how to use Solver to solve linear programming problems. We can hit OK, and we see that basically the most important thing for us was how many of each uh, type of vehicle to produce 
and that is I've highlighted in blue. So we're going to make 3,800 family thrill seekers and 2,400 classy cruisers. That is going to maximize our profit, which was our objective, to, and our profit's going to be 26,640,000. We've satisfied all our constraints. You can check them one at a time. These inequalities are all satisfied. And in fact, we made less than we were required to, than, than our constraint for the demand constraint on Classy Cruiser. So we have a slack of 1,100. Okay? So I hope this was helpful. I'll try to do more videos and maybe more complicated problems. Uh, the solver package is a really useful package. You don't need to go and download other programs like Lindo and other languages for uh, operations research. This pretty much will do uh, pretty difficult problems, uh, upwards of 100 variable problems for you. Here we had a very simple two variable problem with three constraints. But this was a good fundamental uh, example so that you can build on this. So I hope this was helpful. Be sure to check out my channel for more Excel, Access, PowerPoint, Math, Statistics, and other computer tricks video tutorials. Subscribe, comment, and be sure to click on our sponsor's ads. That's what keeps these videos coming to you for free. Till next time, have a great day and thanks for watching.